What's up you guys, I'm Dr. Nick. Thanks again for tuning into my YouTube channel. I hope that you're enjoying all these videos. I know that some of them are graphic. We're trying to do our best to make a mix of videos that appease those that wanna see the surgical videos, such as my residents, my students, other surgeons out there that are trying to learn new procedures. And I also want to appeal to audiences that are just interested in different medical procedures or fascinating things that we see in my practice as well as in the operating room. So in this video, I'd like to talk about something that we encounter occasionally. Um, I don't know that we see it every day or even weekly, but several times a year, we will encounter a patient that has maggots on their foot or on their leg and many people are extremely grossed out by this some people don't even think it's real I just posted a video on my TikTok account and it generated 4 million views in the first several hours and it shut my account down because other videos that were posted were also not as graphic actually but they were getting community guideline banned and by having more than four of those in one day your account gets permanently banned from TikTok so I had to reach out to TikTok and get the account re-added and now that video is at 17 million views as I record today so it's actually interesting that these kind of things happen and I get a ton of questions about why does that happen? Is the patient okay? How could they even let it happen? Or how can they let this occur to their foot? And it's actually very common. So I'd like to talk to you about this in this video today and explain why we get maggots on wounds or on your foot or on your leg. So basically what happens is we have to remember maggots are actually larvae or they're they're from flies. So when flies lay their eggs, these maggots form from the eggs that the flies lay. There are different types of wounds that we encounter in podiatry or just in medicine in general. You, you have what are called diabetic foot ulcerations, which are on the bottom of the feet usually. And these occur secondary to pressure situations where patients can't feel the ground and they develop calluses. And then these calluses eventually turn into ulcers. So we have to treat these ulcers to try to get them to heal. And one of the things we do is get the patient to stay off their foot. And we wrap them in gauze and put different medications on them. If patients are unable to get to their foot for whatever reason, maybe they're, they're just elderly or they're incapacitated and they're obese and they can't reach down to change their bandages, they sometimes leave their bandages on, if not days, sometimes weeks, if they don't get to a follow-up appointment. So their bandages become soaked with fluid that drains from these wounds and it creates a stinky, foul environment that is very smelly or as we call it malodorous, bad odor. And some of this has to do with bacteria. You know, our body has its normal bacteria that's on the skin and we call this our normal flora. And this is just bacteria that lives on our skin and it helps to keep our you know, bodies going. There's different reasons why we have this bacteria. But if we get an overabundance or an overgrowth of this normal flora, this normal bacteria, it can become harmful. And then this bacteria that used to be living on the skin now invades the wound. And that's what leads to an infection. So as this whole process is occurring, it creates this bad odor, which attracts flies. So the flies will land, lay their eggs on the bandages or the moist, smelly gauze, and the maggots eventually develop and then make their way into the wound. And they kind of thrive off of the wound itself because there are nutrients in the wound and they're actually eating the bacteria. So while many people see this as gross or uncleanliness, which maybe the condition led to the uncleanliness, but it's actually helping to clean the wound up because the maggots are eating the bacteria, they're cleaning through what we call fibrotic tissue in this wound, and they're helping to maintain or create a healthy wound environment to help this wound to heal. So it's actually a good thing when we see these maggots in the wound, they're keeping it clean and they're, they're debriding the wound naturally. In fact, sometimes we will order maggots for wounds that are hard to heal for whatever reason and we'll put these maggots on the wound in a medically controlled environment and we'll cover them with certain special gauze bandages and these maggots will help to clean out the wound. And so another reason this can happen is patients with extremely large legs, such as obese patients, they will develop large weeping wounds because their veins start to not work properly and they develop what are known as venous stasis ulcerations. And so these veins, they malfunction and stop working properly and patients will start to get these large wounds on their legs called venous stasis ulcers. And to treat these, we'll have to wrap the legs with gauze 
and there are special compression bandages that we use to compress and push the fluid out of the leg. And again, the same thing can happen. The patients, for whatever reason, may miss an appointment or they're draining so much fluid, the malodor, the bad odor starts to accumulate on these wounds. The flies will come in and land and lay their eggs and maggots will form and start to accumulate on the wound. So you might think it's gross. You might think it's very unhealthy or uncleanly for these patients, but it's actually normal. You know, we see this a lot and it's not harmful, although it does demonstrate signs of poor hygiene for patients and we may need to get social services in to help these patients with their living situations. So I hope that answers your questions that you all have that are following my channel and are posting comments about why this patient had maggots or some of my other patients had maggots. And I hope that it helps to answer some of your questions. If you have any other thing you want to hear me speak about or talk about or there's pictures you want to see or videos of surgeries that you want to see drop it in the comments section below i really appreciate all your questions and comments the channel is growing we're getting tons of comments tons of subscribers you guys are liking the shorts that i'm posting and i know some people say we want to see the whole video not just the short remember youtube is really focusing on shorts now and we're pumping out a lot of different videos to help grow the channel and grow subscribers. Trust me, we have a lot of full length videos coming of different surgeries and pathologies that I see in the operating room. Hope that you like this. Please click on some of these other videos that I have posted above. I look forward to seeing you on my next video. Thanks.